Hello, my name is Louise Langridge and I'm the Joint Managing Director of Morgan McKinley Australia. I would like to welcome you to our Insight Series. As part of our commitment to add value to each of our specialist communities, we're delighted to bring to you this series where you will hear from market leaders in your industry. Welcome, Huma, uh, to uh, this is Morgan McKinley's uh, Insight Series, our first edition of analytics. Um, it'd be great if you could just give us an idea of your current position and what you're doing at the moment in Sydney analytics. Uh, so I'm, I'm a managing director at Harris Partners, which is a data and digital transformation company. Um, we're here today really to gain some more insights into your thoughts on the kind of Sydney market uh, or Australia market and where that's going in terms of analytics and uh, I suppose what your thoughts are. So I arrived in Sydney uh, three years ago. Uh, we moved here from New York and my observation at the time in 2013 was that Australia is um, probably about three years behind uh, best practices and adoption of the um, analytics and digital technologies uh, compared to the US. And my observation over the past um, couple of years um, since I've set up Harris Partners has been that the gap is probably actually uh, increasing rather than decreasing. Okay, so interesting thought. And what do you think has been the real reason behind that in, in the Australian market? I think some of it is driven by the conservatism of the big uh, corporations. Um, the level of innovation in the US is uh, driven a lot by the uh, disruptive startups um, and corporations sort of use those startups uh, to, to get the talent and to adopt those new new practices. Um, the level of, of tech innovation in, in Australia is obviously not as high and that probably meant that the, the uh, executives of, of really large companies um, do not feel that they, they need to uh, compete and they need to push the uh, envelope um, because they are not threatened by the smaller guys. And surely that's, that will change as, as maybe in the next few years you mentioned that the gap is increasing. Um, but uh, is there a possibility for the injection of these startups to create the competition, do you think? So I think with the Sydney tech ecosystem uh, is, is seeing you know, some positive signals and, and positive boosts. We definitely, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, people that are excited about uh, making the changes uh, and about pushing the... Um, the, the ecosystem uh, forward, the, you know, Murudi, the initiative by Telstra, the uh, Stone and Chalk, um, and, and other accelerators are popping up and uh, the government is saying all the right things, maybe not following it up with all the uh, right actions, but I think there is enough excitement going on that, yes, there are some positive signals. And in terms of software, I think the biggest difference I've seen uh, is the use in, particularly in sort of advanced analytics, you would say, of tools like R and Python, which obviously are open source. How do you think that's going to affect the sort of influx of people using those tools is going to affect companies moving forward? So, creation of the open source tools has massively decreased the price point of, of the toolkit available. So. Um, R is already the uh, highest market share uh, tool and it's free and it used to be that you would need to pay um, four or five thousand dollars for a SaaS license in order to run a uh, piece of analytics um, you know unsupervised uh, segmentation and now this is available for free to any startup that is willing to uh, to do it so I think the, the decreased price point definitely means that the, the data science uh, and, and advanced analytics is more open to, uh, to anybody that is willing, uh, willing to try. Fantastic. So rounding back to uh, the point around competition in the market currently in Australia, how do you think data can influence uh, that, particularly in the big, uh, the larger companies currently operating? 
So I think the Australian market is characterized by a small number of very large players uh, that dominate majority of the of the market share. And in those conditions, there's always an opportunity for the guys who are number two or number three to use something like this, instead of feeling comfortable with the status quo, to use a disruptive tool like data and digital combined with digital channels to drive that advantage to actually uh, try to become number one. Um, some examples from across the globe might be Tesco, which obviously is running the most successful uh, grocery uh, loyalty program in the world. And Tesco in 1987, when they started their loyalty program, was a number three um, grocer in the UK. And over the years, they have used their data and analytics uh, as a competitive advantage to eventually become number one. Their current problems at the moment are not uh, created by data, but their continued rise was driven by the way in which they managed to get customer insights in order to um, create uh, better products, better marketing, uh, better promotions. So there is massive opportunity for uh, the likes of Optus and Vodafone trying to uh, be more nimble than uh, Telstra in using the data and digital channels to reach the customers uh, better. To a certain extent, we're already seeing it with uh, calls after takeover by uh, West Farmers and restructuring of their uh, flybys program um, is already uh, miles ahead of uh, Woolies in uh, using their uh, loyalty data and in the momentum that they have behind uh, usage of that data. Um, I think this is the opportunity uh, for um, in the Australian uh, in the Australian market and if you then think about what uh, how this can be coupled with the increasing innovation from the from the smaller more disruptive guys um, then I think you know this is a space that might be quite exciting in the next uh, two three years okay I think with that particularly Tesco's as well is a great example of a company really actually making use of their data I mean from uh, from my end, Dunhumby was pretty much the company that introduced um, that idea to Tesco's. Do you think there's still room for companies uh, like Dunhumby, which started very small uh, in Australia, to influence the much larger companies and offer that kind of service or try and innovate the way they use data? Uh, absolutely, and you know we're we're seeing that with with our company. We're uh, um, small player but we are compete head to head with uh, McKinsey and BCG and punch well above our weight. The um, transformation work that we have done uh, for example with, with 7-Eleven uh, has really put them on a different, uh, on a different path and they are using, uh, using the data uh, in, in a very different and, uh, way than, than they used to. And with the, I suppose, the companies that are now thinking about data, now looking to, to move towards new data strategies, um, what message would you have to uh, CEOs of companies that don't quite value the data yet and, and how that's leaving them behind in the market globally? So I would say that um, the, 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 any time that you hear data, you should always think, what does it mean? There is the data means nothing unless the actual insight is acted upon. And the way in which to, to do it is the best uh, way in which to use the granular insight that you are now able to, uh, to get about your customers is to use digital channels because you are able to reach individual people or at least people in micro segments rather than in, uh, in a mass media uh, way. So the, if data and digital are the yin and the yang, anytime that you hear data, you should be thinking how will that data be delivered through a most granular method of personalization and targeting to a customer. 
And any time that you hear digital, you should be thinking what data is underlying that digital contact. If you have digital that is not underlined by digital customer touch points that are not underlined by this granular data, you are just treating your, your digital channels in the same way as you would use TV or outdoor advertising or any other mass media. So always think about closing that loop and, and, and giving the power uh, to your data uh, and analytics teams to actually influence the real uh, way in which it's being used and then it, uh, and also educate your digital teams that uh, manage the customer touch points and, and drive their analytical, uh, analytical savviness. At the end of the day, the way in which I describe those digital and data transformations is that they are, um, that they are simple. They are not easy, but they are simple. And a good comparison here is uh, running a marathon. Running a marathon is a very simple, or training for a marathon is a very simple activity. You wake up at 5.15 in the morning and you go for a run. Depending on the day, you might run between 5 and 35 uh, kilometers, but it's simple. It's one step in front of the other. And it's not easy, it's hard. So in those data and digital transformations, the easiness comes from look at some data, get insights from the data, put them in the market in front of customers, test the message, uh, and adjust the message. So be data driven and test a lot. If you follow those two, uh, two cardinal rules, you cannot go wrong. And then the question is, are the corporations going to do that? So what advice would you have for uh, potential candidates looking to enter the market or perhaps further their career uh, in analytics within the Australian market? Uh, so I think the most successful people um, in analytics are the intellectually curious people. So they're the people that are not, uh, will not take data at face value, they would always want to uh, go to the second and third level of detail in understanding what is what are the drivers of particular behavior and, and particular results. Um, those people will be managed to double and triple click into results and actually drive um, commercial gains out of get insights out of the data and then therefore uh, drive um, commercial gains. So the advice is always do a double click, do a triple click, try to find out more, try to be better prepared uh, to, to any potential uh, data related questions. So given that Australia is behind currently in the analytics market, what would attract top offshore talent to Australia at the moment? I think it's the size of the opportunity. The, you can really make quick difference to some of the big organizations and, and exciting organizations as well. You know, in a very colloquial sense, it's shooting fish in the barrel. Um, you do not have to apply the most advanced uh, data science in order to drive progress quickly. The, while there is a lot of the organizations already have the infrastructure uh, in terms of the data available, uh, to to make all this uh, analytics happen. Well, really appreciate you coming today, Kiva, and sharing your thoughts on the analytics market. What would be your one piece of advice now for companies in Australia? Most definitely, don't don't overthink it. Just start doing. Um, it's bias to action is everything. It's do not the, you do not want to have. Uh, analytics it doesn't, especially in customer experience space doesn't have to be an academically academic exercise. You can move extremely quickly and uh, push massive value just by doing frequent iterations uh, based on, on imperfect data. So whatever data you have, start looking at it now and start analyzing it now, not tomorrow or on Monday, but now. Thank you.